<laughs> well then, Bunny. Yes. Here we are at today's main event. A Netflix original movie. Now, please don't run away. Yes. A Netflix original movie by the writer and director of Wet Hot American Summer, which chronicles the creation, meteoric rise of the National Lampoon. Now, I, I wanted to do something different with this discussion because the National Lampoon was about being rebellious and going against societal norms. And in, in, in many ways, National Lampoon was very much a sort of comedy version of 70s punk rock. Yes. So we'll definitely be discussing this week's movie and the National Lampoon and Animal House and SNL and how fucking great Jeff Winger is in this movie. <laughs> we'll get to all of that. But I will also be wildly changing the subject at random intervals. Oh, okay. When you least expect it. <laughs> okay. So just be prepared for that. Okay, Bunny? I will. Okay. So this week, we will be discussing the 2018 WWE Royal Rumble. Okay. This was some weird shit, Bunny. <laughs> some weird ass shit it was odd because there was like a match and then there was a match and then the rumble happened okay and then there were like three matches and then there was another rumble it was weird that sounds weird yes it was really weird. Like I, it, it also it was just difficult for me to watch because I I don't really know the WWE anymore. It, I am the I am about the WWE the way that my older brother is about music. Yeah. While I was watching the Royal Rumble, my brother was watching the Grammys at the exact same time at the exact same night, and it's funny because my brother and I were basically saying the same thing. Really? About two very different things. I'm I'm there watching the WWE all a, a bit upset and confused. And then I check to see what my brother's doing. And he's watching the Grammys going, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Wait, who are you? What do you do? I've, 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 I haven't heard of this before. Have I been gone that long? I'm so confused. What's your deal? What the hell are you wearing? <laughs> and why are you with that guy? I'm so confused. And basically, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly the same as me. You know? Yeah. I, I have I, I have a, a, a tendency of, of paying attention to the WWE roundabout the road to WrestleMania. So the Royal Rumble, the Elimination Chamber, WrestleMania, maybe what comes after WrestleMania. And then I pretty much just tap out. But I'm trying to care more about wrestling because they recently uh, signed uh, indie wrestler Ricochet to a contract with their training facility, which could lead to uh, Ricochet being on TV in, in some form or another in the WWE. And Ricochet was Prince Puma in Lucha Underground. And God damn it, I love Lucha Underground. Yes. And this means I, I should probably start paying attention to the WWE because literally at any second, Prince Puma could just be right there in the middle of it. And so it, it would behoove me to start paying attention. So I decided to watch. And um, it's weird because there for the first time ever, there's a women's Royal Rumble. OK, I, I didn't think about it, frankly. It's inter it's interesting because I'm like, oh, there's going to be a women's Royal Rumble. Okay, that should be interesting. And then I have been hearing rumors for like the past six months that former UFC darling Ronda Rousey might appear in the WWE. Uh-huh. And like very well paid uh a very famous New York Times best-selling UFC women's former women's UFC champion Ronda Rousey might appear as a 
wrestler in the WWE. And then I thought, you know what? She's kind of a big deal. I don't see her doing this. But then over the last like four or five months, the WWE has been firing a lot of people. Have they? Like, like letting this person go, letting this person go, we're getting rid of this person. This person, uh, we are firing because he <laughs> has sexual harassment allegations, and also he's a high-paying guy, so we're just getting rid of him too. And every time I saw news like this, the first comment on the news was always, "Oh, you know why they're firing so many people? They got to save money for Ronda Rousey." Okay. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe he'll show, maybe she'll show up, maybe she won't. That'll be kind of a big deal if she does, but she, I don't think she will. And then a few hours before the Royal Rumble, I heard that the women's Rumble was going to be what main evented the Royal Rumble. Okay. That they, they were going to have a match or two, and then the men's rumble, and then more matches, and then the women's rumble would end everything. And I and I immediately said, "Oh, well, then it's definite uh, fucking Ronda Rousey showing up." Yeah, because there's no way that they would allow the the women to main event. The women have never main evented anything, <clears throat> let alone one of the biggest pay per views of the year. So that definitely means she's going to show up. That's not going to be a surprise. So I'm watching the Rumble, and I'm trying to figure out who people are, and I'm not caring. And then, in the men's Rumble, entrant number 27 got me, and I stood up, and I was screaming. Okay, that's that's there, very encouraging. There are very few people who could show up in a WWE ring that would make me stand up and start screaming. Who was it? But I heard that theme music, and I just lost it. I'm an also, ass man! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, also, you know who else showed up? I, I forgot to... to uh, uh, Rey Mysterio was an entrant. Oh, okay. He was, like, in the last five people. So there's a possibility that Rey Mysterio's back. I've heard that that was just a one-off and that he hasn't officially signed a contract yet with the WWE, so I'm not sure what his status is. But the real shocking one is that, you know, they're count doing the countdown for the Royal Rumble. Five, four, three, two, one. Here he comes, enter at number 27. Yeah. And then I just hear, stand back. There's a hurricane coming through. Oh. The hurricane shows up. Nice. Okay. Fucking lost it. And today I was on Instagram and I saw a behind the scenes photograph and it's the hurricane with former WWE heavyweight champion Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns has like his hand on the hurricane's shoulder and he's looking all sad. And it confused me. So I did some research and god damn it. This is the most beautiful picture in the world now because when the Hurricane was in the WWE. His partner, his sidekick, was Rosie. Okay. And Not, apparently... I, I don't I, remember that, but I don't know the Hurricane until he came to WWE. Yeah, the, the, when, when he... Yeah, he... Rosie was the Hurricane sidekick for like a year or two, and, you know, they'd be there together to the Hura cycle. <laughs> they'd run the Hura cycle, and he'd be in like the sidecar writing yeah. and it was really cute and i didn't realize it at the time but but now roman reigns is like the top guy in the wwe and he's huge and and rosie has died okay. as as many wrestlers do but i didn't i didn't realize this that rosie the hurricane's sidekick was roman reigns's older brother oh and it's such a sad picture to see like uh, the younger brother of the Hurricane's dead partner, like putting his hand on the Hurricane's shoulder. It's a beautiful little picture, and when you know that backstory, God, it's sad as hell. Yeah. But but yeah, so the Hurricane came back. So the Women's Royal Rumble was last, and I heard rumors that Ronda Rousey was going to show up, and so I assumed that she was going to be number thirty. But, a, oh my god, the, the women's Rumble match was amazing, and the reason why it was amazing is that any female wrestler you can think of that used to wrestle in the WWE, 
there's a 50% chance they were in this rumble. Uh huh. Okay. Because when you think about it, it was a 30 women Royal Rumble match. I don't think that there's that many women in the WWE. So like Lita showed up and wrestled. Yeah. Uh, Trish Stratus, Jacqueline, who's really old, yeah. like the first black uh, WWE Women's Champion. She showed up. Uh, Molly Holly. I thought she Molly was dead. Molly Holly. I thought she was dead. That surprised the hell out of me. Uh, Kelly Kelly, Beth Phoenix, like a, a bajillion people showed up and everyone's like assuming that number 30 is going to be Ronda Rousey and there's like chance for her and everything. And then it, it shocked everybody when number 30 showed up and it was Trish Stratus. And they're like, oh, wow. OK, so it, it, Ronda Rousey isn't showing up. All right, then. Apparently, uh, this was just a wonderful beautiful celebration of the women of the wwe and over the last year or two or three uh, stephanie mcmahon has really spearheaded um hey the women in the wwe are objects to be stared at but now it's like 2015 we can't have this anymore we need to make the women's wrestling division important and strong and so they really have transformed uh, women's wrestling into it's no longer the thing you go and get a beer during. Yeah. It's something important and it's really a big draw in the WWE. So the women's Royal rumble was a celebration of the women of WWE and how far they've come and, and this and that. And then uh, a, a Japanese wrestler won, and she's there in the middle of the ring deciding whether she's going to uh, challenge the the women's champion of raw or the women's champion of SmackDown. Hmm. A really, a really, uh, shocking moment. And then fucking Ronda Rousey shows up. Okay. At the end. And she just stands in the middle of, of, of the ring and points at the WrestleMania sign. And it's like, ah, shit. I was right the whole time that none of this, the women main eventing the Royal rumble and this celebration of women, Fuck all of that. This was all just for Ronda Rousey. (laughs) So then I was so happy, like, the next day. Have you seen Wendy's Twitter account? Like, the actual restaurant Wendy's? (laughs) No. (laughs) They They have a Twitter account, but for whatever reason, they're really fucking mean. Yeah? Yeah, they're the... Yeah, it's obviously not run by some, like, corporate board it's just some dude somewhere that they've given free reign to and the guy is just savage as fuck (laughs) and so people have a lot of fun just like fucking with wendy's and seeing wendy's get into fights with mcdonald's and wendy's taking a shit on kfc and just fighting arby's for no reason like wendy's twitter account is really really fun so someone asked the wendy's twitter account how come you weren't in the royal rumble so the Wendy's tw- official Wendy's Twitter account said, because we heard that all we had to do was show up at the end and point at a WrestleMania sign. <laughs> it's like, damn, you just made fun of Ronda Rousey. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a big deal. It made the news. It was on fucking CNN and ESPN. Ronda Rousey is now a full time WWE wrestler. So hooray. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But it was all worth it because the hurricane came back. He was only in the Royal Rumble for about a minute, but it meant so much to me to see uh, the hurricane run into the ring and John Cena's there and he tried to choke slam John Cena like he <laughs> used to do. He used to always try and choke slam all these big, huge dudes. Yeah. And then John Cena's like, nope, and throws him out of the ring. It was just a beautiful moment. <laughs> and I just, it meant so much to me because I love that man. Yes, the hurricane. I, I enjoyed the hurricane. Yeah, he had a good little, a good little gimmick going for him. Yeah, and a, and bit, I have a, a bit ahead of his time. Yeah, what he needs to do now is they need to bring the hurricane back full time. But like they do in Hollywood, they need to give him a gritty reboot. <laughs> yes, and like you see him, and he's standing on a gargoyle in the rain. Yeah backstage and they're like who who brought a gargoyle backstage not only that why is it raining and he's just all angry and upset something bad happened to me now i talk like this (laughs) 
a gritty reboot. Like all superheroes, mm-hmm. the Hurricane needs a gritty reboot. If you're listening, WWE. So anyway, this week we will be discussing the brand spanking new 2008 Netflix movie. But just because I said Netflix movie, please don't run away. A futile and stupid gesture. Yes. Based on the 2006 book of the same name written by Josh Carp that no one fucking bought. <laughs> so, Wet Hot American Summer. Okay. That was a good episode. It's one we did forever ago. No one saw Wet Hot American Summer in the theaters. No. And in 2003, when my brother and I were quoting that goddamn movie, no one knew what the fuck we were talking about. Because <laughs> my brother and I, we we just primarily speak in movie quotes. We We just talk in references. And so we would just be at the bar and we would be doing karaoke. And it's like, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to go hump the fridge. <laughs> and like, no one knows what we're talking about, but he knew and I knew. And that's just like, that's all that mattered. Yeah. You know, but Wet Hot American, it, it, Wet Hot American Summer had its loyal fans. And as that film's cult grew, so did the name of director David Wayne. He was from MTV's The State. He was also a member of the Comedy Central show Stella. He did a number of movies after Wet Hot American Summer, including Wanderlust, Role Models, and The Ten. The Ten is hard to find, but it is worth it. I still laugh every time I think of Cat Scan Machines or Diane Weist. (laughs) Okay. That is honest. The Cat Scan Machine is hilarious. Uh, I love that scene so much. For me, right there, that's a very good recommendation. Yeah, yeah, so many dead kids. So, David Wayne got popular. Uh, Wanderlust starred Jennifer Aniston. Uh-huh. And it, it it didn't do good in the box office, but still, I thought, David Wayne can get Jennifer Aniston now? <laughs> like, wow. And when he did Role Models, that movie cost $28 million to make, and it made about $100 million in the box office. So David Wayne was getting known. Meanwhile, the cult of Wet Hot American Summer grew and grew to the point where in 2015, 2015, Netflix teamed up with David Wayne to essentially create the Wet Hot American Summer cinematic universe with a documentary of the making of Wet Hot American Summer, a Wet Hot American Summer prequel series, and a sequel series that I will eventually get around to watching. <laughs> Get around to watching, but you're such a big fan. What, what, what is delaying you? Marvel was delaying me. Marvel was delaying me. Fuck Marvel damn. was delaying me. There's so much Marvel on there, and not a lot of it's good. <laughs> so basically, Netflix is now in the David Wayne business. So Netflix is now getting first crack at David Wayne's. Uh, talent salad is crunchy talent salad. Uh huh. FYI, crunchy talent, crunchy talent salad. Verbal copyright 2008. The Pope on Film Podcast. All rights violently reserved. Yes. So in 2016, Netflix announced that uh, this film, a futile and stupid gesture, uh, it was going into production. It, by the way. For those of you who aren't in the know, the title, A Futile and Stupid Gesture, is obviously a line from Animal House. Yes. So I know that film very well. So Bluto says to Dingus (laughs) in the strip club, hey, Dingus, one day in the future, Netflix will give millions of dollars to Adam fucking Sandler. (laughs) Dingus drops Dingus drops his cigar and says, what the fuck? Adam Sandler, that would be a futile and stupid gesture. And that's where the name comes from. Uh Uh-huh. Justin, if you don't know that quote, you probably just don't know Animal House like I do. (laughs) I I am guessing no, I probably don't. 
because no, yeah. I, I, I don't even recall that scene. Yeah, that's that's the which amazing is creepy, yeah. fucking weird. Yeah, you know what? Probably Mandela effect. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Yeah, some people, some people thought that Nelson Mandela died way earlier than he did, and some people thought that he wasn't a rapper. It's really weird. Yeah. About Nelson Mandela. Like I and also I remember him as being named Nelson Boom Boom Mandela. <laughs> but people also don't remember that, which is weird. That's another Mandela effect thing. Mm -hmm. You know? Like no one else remembers Nelson Mandela's successful boxing career. Oh, he was great. Yeah, or that time when he killed a guy in the ring, like oh. <laughs> so, bunny. Yes. Cocaine. Cocaine. Uh, what I thought there was like, wow, you you're really late getting into the cocaine addiction here. You know, that really no. should have been earlier on in the movie. Cocaine. Okay. Was. Heaven for poor people. Okay. Cocaine is an actual mythical thing. It, it is literally a mythical heaven for peasants. So in the Middle Ages... Really? Yeah, nice. no, this, this, this is an actual thing. There's a fucking Grimm's fairy tale about it. So cocaine, C-O-C-K-A-Y-N-E. It was basically believed that the rich people, the landowners and the dukes and fucking whatever, they would go to heaven where they would sit on a cloud and play a harp and, and there would be fruit. Yeah, Be because in heaven, uh, just to let everybody know, because I know a lot about heaven in heaven, all you do is wear a diaper and eat grapes all day. Yes. On a cloud and nothing else. We have if that anyone... on very, very good authority. Yeah. If anyone says you don't, then that person is a crazy nut job. Mm -hmm. But what about the peasants? They don't want any of that uh, Shiite Muslim. It, it, where where's the alcohol and the sex that p poor people like? Yeah. So so that's where the legend of cocaine came from. Cocaine was essentially a heaven, but for fucking poor people. So it, every there's a bunch of different stories and poems and fairy tales and stuff about cocaine, the place where all the poor people went. Because poor people and the peasants they're working in the fields and they're poor and they're peasants. And they one day hope to have a good life. So basically, that's what they would get in heaven. They would they would go to cocaine, which was this magical land. And there there's descriptions of what co cocaine is like, and they're all fucking crazy. Really nice. Yeah. So here, so here now are a few actual descriptions of cocaine in various legends. Okay. Okay. Again, it's all true. Uh. The houses in cocaine are made of sugar and cakes. Okay. That's got to be nice. If you're hungry, you can just eat your walls. Yeah, but then you would have to get a new house. And ha I mean, I, 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 okay, maybe I'm being silly here, but I think it would be more efficient to just buy candy and cakes. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Sometimes you just want to eat a load-bearing cake. <laughs> because <laughs> they taste better like everybody knows that mm -hmm. in the land of cocaine the streets are paved with pastries which I don't think is safe it, it doesn't sound safe to me here's my favorite here's my favorite part of the legend of cocaine this is the one legend that people seem to know and remember the most in cocaine it rains cheese it rains cheese. Yes. Uh. It's obvious that the legend of cocaine, the poor people heaven, uh, was created before they started making spray cheese. Because that can Clearly. will kill you. And then where do you go if you die in heaven? That's a good question. Yeah, that's the sort of question that, like, if I was, uh, 
22 years old and stoned, I would think about that for about 45 minutes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and have a conversation that I would not remember while uh, the band Fish is playing in the background. But see, I don't know. For me, squeezed <clears throat> cheese is America. Mm -hmm. Only Americans can come up with squeezed cheese. Yeah. Yeah. The French cheese wouldn't do that. Can. Oh, hell no. We can come up with spray cheese because as Americans, we don't have a good self-esteem. True. There's a, there's a much better self-esteem in France. Aye. Oh, no. We cannot do this. And then, meanwhile, America's like, oh, what was that? I'm sorry. I was just stapling my nuts to my leg. <laughs> I read an article somewhere. I believe it was on Jezebel.com, and I fully believe this. This weekend at the Super Bowl, uh, Justin Timberlake is going to be performing the halftime show. And I think that as penance, he should at least show one nut. I, you know, I think that's fair. It's only fair. I think it's that's only fair. fair. There are shops in cocaine and they give everything away for free. That's very nice. Yeah, very nice. Here's 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 a crazy story. This was in like a poem in the Middle Ages. Pre-roasted pigs walk around with knives and forks inside of them to make them easier to eat. Ooh, that hardly sounds fair, though, you know? Yeah. And how do you kill it if it already has like a knife and fork in it? Are they happy about it? Is it like a me seeks box? Is a cow going to be coming up to me? Hey, how you doing? Will you kill me, please? <laughs> Why don't you let me die? You know? Yeah. I don't know because we we know that stabbing it with our steely knives don't work. Yep. Just can't kill the beast. No. The the rivers in cocaine are made of wine. Okay. You stay eternally young. Like, like like real wine, or is it made of wine? I just wanted to be a bubbling brook, you guys. <laughs> no, actual wine. You can get drunk in cocaine. You stay eternally young. And here's the best part about cocaine, which makes me want to go there. Sex whenever you want. All right. There are nuns, but they're really horny nuns. <laughs> what I one of the stories I read said that everything was opposite in cocaine. So in in cocaine, there are friars that smoke and cuss, and there are nuns, but they lift up their uh, garments so that they can show their naked butts. <laughs> And also, you can have sex whenever you want. So now I'm torn, Bunny, because yeah. cocaine sounds like an awesome-ass heaven to go to when you die. But, you know, it goes two ways. I notice in the description that there's no mention of gel balls or treehouse slides. Uh, no. And and that is a failing, I would have to say. Yeah. I, I, I don't think there are any carnies in cocaine. <laughs> So it's kind of it's kind of a toss up right now for me. When you would when you would think oddly that all the cornies would be there. Yeah. Now I read I read a book by Chuck Palahniuk and it was his take on it's a series he's working on. He's written two books in it. He's he hasn't yet released the third book but basically he's writing like an 80s teenage version of uh the divine comedy okay and li literally it's about a girl in hell writing letters to satan and each chapter starts are you there satan it's me <laughs> And then she and but then it becomes like the breakfast club because she meets all of these other young people in heaven and they become best friends and they try and break out. And it's not until the end of the first book that she realizes that everyone is from a different time period. Ah. Oh. Now. 
I like Chuck Palahniuk, but I think that's bullshit. Okay. Something tells me that if I want to go to cocaine, because I honestly believe my my uh, my afterlife belief is that whatever you believe happens to you when you die is what you get, which is why there's all of these Christians going, oh, my God, I just died and I came by and I went to heaven and there were pearly gates and people with freaking robes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because all of your life you were trained that that's what happens to you when you died and then you died. And where did you go? Exactly where you were taught you were supposed to go. Yeah. Wherever you want, where whatever you think is going to happen to you is what happens to you when you die. So the way I see that is I get to choose some pretty awesome heavens. Okay. So, but something tells me that if I die and I go to cocaine, I'm going to be filled with a bunch of uh, middle ages motherfuckers. Yeah. Like I'm going to go to cocaine and suddenly I'm, uh, Oh, come hither boy. And I'm like, Oh, fuck this. I'm out of it. <laughs> I'm out. I got to get out of cocaine because fuck all y'all yeah. racist motherfuckers. I'm a, I, unlike Chuck Palahniuk's assessment of heaven. I'm pretty sure that it would be obvious. Like you'd be meeting someone in heaven and, and that person's like, what up soul brother? And I'm like, okay, seventies. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. See that easy, that easy. I, I can see that. And I, I can agree with that. Yeah. Are you wearing mixed fabrics? <laughs> so, reviews. People hate a futile and stupid gesture. I'm not sure why. I liked it. Yeah. Currently, the film has 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. People hate this movie. Yeah, and I'm not really understanding why either. Now, Bunny. I'm sorry to have to do this to you, Bunny. Okay. But let's go back to the movie Bright. Yeah. Because yeah. remember, buddy, only a bright can control the power of the wand. Everybody knows that. That's the great prophecy. <laughs> you know what's weird? Well, Will Smith calls his partner Shrek. Yeah. So Shrek exists in this universe. Uh, yes, it does. That's that's just odd, right? <laughs> it's kind of like how like like it, that was the one thing that bugged me watching The Walking Dead, and everyone's like, "Oh, walkers! We have walkers coming up here," and I'm like, "So George Romero doesn't exist here?" Yeah, that bugs me. George Romero doesn't exist. <laughs> like, you need, so 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 what? Did uh did Bela Lugosi exist? Did Plan Nine from Outer Space come out in your universe? I'm so confused. Yeah. But when you see a film like Bright with fairies and elves and orcs, uh -huh. then you kind of assume that yeah, they won't have Shrek. I, I I wouldn't think so. But Shrek is technically an ogre. Yeah, but but they're already well. What if what if Shrek is actually an autobiography? Yeah. What if Shrek is like a fairy tale to orcs? Yeah. Yeah. So if you recall that episode, the bright episode, I said that the movie was okay. It wasn't the best. It was pretty good for a Will Smith film, but that's a low bar. <laughs> yeah. But what I liked about it was that the movie, what I liked about it was what Bright stood for. That the film was a big budget film that could easily come out in theaters in May or June or July. That, that this film is okay, it's not the best, but this film is an important milestone. Because, hey, maybe after this, the, the, the words... Netflix original movie won't be something to shudder and run away from. Yeah. That that I I don't like bright, but I like what it stands for. It means that from here on out maybe we could actually see some bigger budgets and better talent and bigger names and better quality. Mm -hmm. So I think that this week's movie could be a very good example of that. Okay. 
<clears throat> yeah, that- I think so. I well, I don't think it had such a huge budget. It didn't need a huge budget. Yeah. But but but, but this is this is a story. Like, why hasn't this been told already? Mm-hmm. Why is it taken this long? Like like. I know very little about about the National Lampoon. I had never heard of National Lampoon until Animal House. Yeah. You know? And then you watch this movie, and good fucking God, everybody is involved. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of shocking that... that this one person was so influential in American comedy and people have no idea who the hell he is. Yeah. 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 And now I want to know how it plays into everything else, you know, like, um, wasn't pretty much the, uh, the original cast of Saturday night live. Didn't they always say that they had all originally come from like the groundlings or something like that? That's what I always that's what I always thought. Yeah. But I'm but I don't know. Yeah. It, well, so so how what? did they so how did they get from there to to National Lampoon, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that what happened was they were all in groundlings and then the National Lampoon picked them from groundlings oh. to help them with the national lampoon so then when they were then stolen by snl snl said yes we got them from the uh, groundling uh. we're gonna skip a step and say these people were all from the groundlings and nothing else yeah i think that's where it came from i will say something i thought i knew the story of the national lampoon but then Martin Mull shows up in the beginning and, and is basically, this is my story. I am an older version of the person you're going to be watching this film. And I'm like, wait, so he didn't die of drugs? I'm confused. <laughs> I guess he is still alive or lived to be as old as Martin Mull is. But then he didn't. He died very young. And I'm like, ah, shit, this movie fucking fooled me. <laughs> I, that's what they were doing the whole fucking time. God damn it, this film! I gotta, I gotta, I gotta tip my hat to this film because they fooled the fuck out of me. Yeah, I thought for sure that I knew the story, and then fucking old ass Martin Malt, Professor Plum or whatever shows up, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, so I guess I don't know the story. Oh wait, I kind of did know the story. I was kind of right. There you go. <laughs> the real life people were pretty close. I, you didn't see the Gilda Radner a lot, but she was really good. She, she was, yes. And Chevy Chase, hats off to freaking Joe McHale. He really did a good Chevy Chase. He did a great Chevy Chase. Because Joe McHale and and Jeff Winger and Joe McHale is host of the soup. He already has this sort of cocky demeanor. He has a book out and it's a self improvement book to help people be more like him. <laughs> nice. I appreciate and now, that. And now apparently he's in the Netflix business too because there. It, Sometime between now and summer are going to be premiering like the Joe McHale show starring Joe McHale as Joe McHale. Okay. And uh, Joe McHale hosted the show The Soup for a decade. Really? That's where it came from. Yeah. And and there was someone before him. John Henson was originally the host. I remember John Henson. Yeah, because he had he was the skunk. He had that one streak of white hair in his in on the top of his freaking head and then he went to do wipeout so then joe McHale took over and i didn't realize he was there for a full decade like that's a long ass time well i think it actually started with greg kinnear first oh greg kinnear and then john henson and then joe okay there you go 
So yeah, so so now apparently, as far as I can tell, the Joe McHale sto- sh- starring Joe McHale as Joe McHale is basically just going to be a legally different version of the soup. Okay. So I'm excited about that because I loved that show, The Soup, whenever I could watch it. And now it's going to be on Netflix, which I have. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Good for freaking Joe McHale. Uh, What else did I like about this? Oh, they did such a great job of explaining exactly how Saturday Night Live was a ripoff. Yeah. Good for them. Good for this film. That was good, and that was important, and I liked that. Mm-hmm. Also, but but once uh, you once you once you start seeing people pile up like John Belushi, Gilda Radner, and all that, then you know that's what it's going to be. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think the moral of this story, if there is a moral, I think the moral of this story has to be yay cocaine. <laughs> but that's basically just the underlying cocaine is awesome. I, 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 that, that was a lot of my takeaway too. Yeah. Especially with that Chevy. You can't hang out with that Chevy. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. God damn. Chevy freaking chase. And, and I will say that this film has inspired me because, because I do now want to know. So wait, where did fucking national lampoons vacation come from? That's an excellent question. We because I knew National Lampoon's animal house. Yeah. And then I was aware of, of, um, uh, Caddyshack, but then National Lampoon's Vacation was huge, and they made a shit ton of those. Uh huh. Yeah. So where did those come from? If this guy was dead, that is a really good question. And another thing I've been telling people about we we need a a, a, a historian and a private detective. That yeah, things like this. Another. Th- it, the the thing I've been telling people about is that I've never seen a biopic be so honest. Yeah. He was totally a dick, and he came off like a dick in a lot of cases. No, but also the fact that they literally showed a list of things they changed or cut out. Yes. That was brilliant. Ah, damn, that is some serious, honest shit. And I paused it a couple of times, and one of the things was, uh, these guys were way more racist. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I've flipped through some National National Lampoon magazines, and there's some serious racist shit in there. It looks to me as it's it's the next step from, like, zapped comics. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. It's an adult mad. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like an offensive adult mad yeah. magazine. Yeah. But I really liked this film. It was a really good film. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. And I, I, I liked seeing how good they did with the characters, man. And again, Mondo Mike was, I, I, I don't know what else to call him. That's that's how I know yeah. him. Yeah. You know, I don't know what else to call him, but God him and that's how it was with all the characters it was like you know you just look and like i know who that is yeah i've always hated him oh but thomas lennon did such a good job and he's getting upset because someone sent him a stick of live dynamite but that's not what's upsetting him. What's upsetting him is that they're trying to take the dynamite away from him. That is mine. That was sent to me. That is legally my property. And they're dragging him out of the offices. And he yells, rape, rape. I have now warned you verbally that I am going to rape you. <laughs> and it's like, God, oh, I oh. love him. He, he, did an, he did an excellent job. I mean, I was able to recognize a guy that I haven't seen in like, fucking 40 years forever and maybe only saw like once or twice 
Yeah, you know, he was the he was the first uh, lead writer of Saturday Night Live and the first person to have a line on Saturday Night Live. Uh huh. Because he was the guy who was teaching um, John Belushi to speak English, so he, I would like, I would like to feed you, to feed you to the Wolverines, to the Wolverines. <laughs> so he had the first lines ever in the first Saturday Night Live. Yeah. In that first season of Saturday Night Live, they did something so brilliant that I still hope that one day SNL will do it again. What did they do? Rob Reiner was hosting, and he went out and he did his monologue, but then at the end, he messes it up and he goes, ah, oh, man, I, I'm i sorry, I messed up that line. Okay, let's take it again. And he starts from the beginning of his monologue. Yeah. And everyone's like, Rob, 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 <laughs> Rob, yes. This is live. You can't start over. And he's like, what? This is live? I thought this was taped. I haven't memorized my lines. Are you serious? This is live? <laughs> so he literally fucks up the rest of the show. Yeah. Because he he is acting as if he didn't know it was live. So he messes up everything else he's in for the entire <laughs> rest of the show he comes out half dressed in a costume and he's messing up the lines and it's brilliant yeah because for the first time ever in an episode of snl there's continuity mm -hmm. throughout the entire episode throughout every skit there's one unifying factor which is this guy is fucking up because he thought it was taped <laughs> and they, they did it the first season they never did it again and i'm still watching hoping that that one day they are able to do something like as good and amazing and brilliant as this, but they never have. And they never will until I host. Yes. Then I'm bringing it. Then I am bringing it because that's freaking genius. But I love this movie. I really, yeah. I, 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 I what are people bitching about? What's, what's, what's the problem that it's getting such bad talk? Um, uh, the main one that I keep reading, I think is from slate.com. This film bit off more than it can chew. Okay. Another one that I read said that it spent more time talking about accomplishments than it did talking about characterization. Another one that I read. I think they're full of shit. Yeah, that's that's what I'm giving as my my professional opinion. Yeah, they, they're just I, full of shit. Fuck them. So that's all I got for this week's movie. It's on Netflix. It's a damn good movie. You should watch it. It's really fucking good. It's it's excellent. I love it. If you're Next a fan of those, if you're a fan of those films. You know, yeah. especially at the time, those were fucking groundbreaking. Animal House was really groundbreaking. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and how does Stripes play into it? Because Stripes is very much the same type of comedy. Yeah. As Animal Stripes. House was. Yeah. Um, Meatballs, that was another one. Yeah. Uh, meatballs. I haven't seen that, like, since it was first out, so I can't say anything about Meatballs. I haven't seen Caddyshack for a really long time, like a really, 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 really long time. It's on Netflix, but like I, I've seen Caddyshack a lot, you know. Yeah. So I'm not in, I'm not feeling very nostalgic about Caddyshack. It was good. Well, it was fun. It, it was I, really what they said in the movie was pretty true, though. It was very disjointed. Um. Parts of the movie did not connect. Like, Chevy Chase did not connect as a part of anything else in this movie. Not, yeah, not no. this movie. Yeah. Caddyshack. Yeah, he's in his own different film. Yeah. Yeah. That makes absolute sense. Yeah. But I, I remember it being well-received, although I, I can understand the fear if you were opening 
up against uh, Airplane. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Because Airplane now is something completely different from that, even. Yeah. You know? Well, I at first, I was going to go with Symmetry. Yeah. I was going to go with Symmetry, and I was going to to like pick an animal an animal house or a caddyshack to be our next film but i've been sitting on a lot of award winners okay uh for a long time and and oscar screeners and and a very important uh soon to be oscar award winning films and i just we've got to tackle one of those okay the problem is that a lot of them are very serious and I, I want something that's that's not so serious. I just don't want to tackle that right now. So next week uh, we are doing the Academy Award nominated film I, Tanya. I, Tanya. Okay, if you pick that. Okay, that's a good one because I kind of want to see that. The challenging thing for next week is all I've seen of Margot Robbie is fucking Suicide Squad. Okay, yeah. So this woman will have to try really hard to win me. Yeah. But from all that I hear, this film is fucking amazing. Well, it was such a fucked up story to begin with. Another thing that I've heard about the film is that what I've heard is, is the film true? Well, it is to her character. Yeah. And I find that interesting because so many times, oh, this is a biopic. This needs to be 100% honest and truthful. And this is just the honest and truthful story from one person. Oh, well, that's totally different. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So I'm interest. I'm interested to see this film. Yeah, very much, oh. very much. I've seen commercials for it, and it looked very interesting. Yeah. So next week is going to be fun. Next week, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, rounding up illegals. Uh-huh. Next week. Uh huh. I have an exciting interview that we're that we're going to be doing with my evil twin. Okay. Good. We're going to be talking about the Hudson Brothers Razzle Dazzle Show. <laughs> and I'm going to be spending a good portion of next week's notes from the bookstore shitting on a famous person. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And of course, I, Tanya. So next week is going to be a good episode. But if we're talking about this episode here, this episode that we are now wrapping up. Uh, wow. Uh, I laughed. I cried. So many amazing moments I've, and... I've had my eyes open sexually yeah during this uh episode. yeah um we came to the defense of porn actresses and uh ducks who want to have sex with you and fabio 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 fabio, fabio. baltimore cops allison chains looking back now at this uh, amazing episode i i gotta say i think this was a pretty a pretty damn good episode. I think it was a pretty damn good episode, too. Yeah, I'm glad we are in agreement. Yeah. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thank you for listening. And on behalf of Natasha and Maxwell and Bella and Eleanor and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. You godless heathens and i don't think bell is running in here <laughs> uh no i think we're good waiting a few seconds out of respect all right do 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 do